Hi everyone, my name is Val. I work for the Information Lab and I build a lot of business dashboards. And in this series, I share what I wish I'd learned sooner about Tableau. And if you've ever used parameters to create dynamic date axes, similarly to what I have here, we have a yearly level or we have a quarterly or a monthly level, you will have probably noticed that it's not that easy to ensure that your date axis labels are also dynamic based on the parameter selection. And I'll be honest, for a while, I also didn't think it was possible. But then I learned that there is actually something we can do about it. And today I'm going to show you how we can achieve that. All right, let me start from a clean worksheet. Uh, first of all, I'm going to create my date level parameter. It's going to be a string parameter and the three options that I'm going to give it are year, quarter and month. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to display this parameter. and I'm just going to move it over here so you can see it. Then I am going to create a calculated field that uses that parameter. So I'm going to call this dynamic date level. And that will be simply a date trunk to the level of the parameter of order date. So if the date level parameter is set to year, that's date trunk year of order date. If it's set to quarter, it's date trunk quarter of order, rate, uh, of order date, etc. So I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to right click and bring it to columns and I'm going to select this first option for continuous exact date. But if you don't right click, you can go through the drop down and make sure you've selected exact date continuous. Once I have that, I'm going to find my sales and put that onto the rows. And so I have my dynamic chart. I can switch the date level to quarter. I can switch it to a month and the chart will update accordingly. Now, one other thing that I'm going to do here is just add a dynamic date filter so that uh, when we're looking at a yearly level, we'll see all the years that we have in the data set. If we're looking at a quarterly level, let's say we just want to see the last eight quarters. And then if we're looking at the monthly level, we're just going to see the last 13 months. And in the interest of time, I am going to just paste in an expression that I've written earlier, um, as this is not the main focus of this tutorial, but feel free to pause the video uh, and have a look at how I've achieved that. So I'm just going to call this filter dynamic date range and I'm going to paste this in. OK, and I'm going to bring this to filters and select true. Great, so when I'm on a monthly level, I can see I have 13 marks in the view. If I'm on a quarterly level, I've got eight marks in the view, exactly what I wanted. So let me just turn this into a bar chart. All right, so while the chart behaves as expected, my axis labels are kind of all over the place. They do look okay on a monthly level, but they become pretty much useless on a quarterly or a yearly level. And there isn't a straightforward way for me to make sure those labels are dynamic, neither through the formatting pane on the left, nor through editing the axis. So what I do in these scenarios, particularly if I need to keep my axis continuous, is create another calculated field, uh, which I would call dynamic axis labels. And here I'm going to specify exactly how I want those axis labels to appear in the three different scenarios. So I'm going to start with a case statement. 
case, my date level parameter, when it's set to year, then just use the date name year of that dynamic date level. So just a string value of the year of the date. When it's set to quarter, then I'm going to start with a capital Q plus, and I'm going to copy this over, date name quarter of the dynamic date level plus a space and plus the name of the year. Let me just expand this out. And then finally, when it's set to the month, then I'm going to start with the date name of the month. But I'm not going to use the full month name. I'm just going to take the left, the first three characters. And again, plus a space, plus the name of the year, end. Okay, when I have that, I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to bring this new field onto the label. Great, so now I have my year labels on top of the bars. Let me just verify that it appears correctly on the quarterly level, and it appears correctly on the monthly level. Perfect. So the final step here would be to move those labels to the bottom of the bars and eventually hide the original axis. If I just go through the alignment options on the label, I can try to move it to the bottom and the labels will move to the bottom, but they will still overlap with the bars and there isn't a way for me to force them to appear underneath the bars. So what I'm going to do is double click on my row shelf and type out average of zero. And then I'm going to go to the marks card of that second axis and I'm going to turn it a Gantt bar. And then I'm going to move up to my bars and I can either completely remove the dynamic axis labels from this card or I can move them to tooltips so I can use them later. And you've probably guessed where this is going. I am going to dual axis the two and I'm going to synchronize. And I will definitely want to remove those measure names from color. And now I can right click and hide the original axis and the right-hand side axis as well. And there you go. We now have a dynamic date axis with neat and user-friendly labels. Now, obviously, this technique only works if the chart itself does not require the use of dual axis, but hopefully this can still be helpful to you in some scenarios. All right, thank you all for watching. I hope you found this useful and stay tuned for more.